This podcast features mortgage banker Cindy Vandiver, NMLS 164102. At Stockton Mortgage, NMLS 8259, equal housing lender. Views and opinions expressed are those of Ms. Vandiver and do not necessarily reflect those of Stockton Mortgage. Ms. Vandiver's information should not be considered to be legal or tax advice. Investing in real estate can set up a great cash flow for your future. On today's show, we're going to talk about real estate investing and giving you tips and insight into your real estate investing journey. That's today on the From the Heart and Sold show. I'm April Rooks with Remax Center. And I'm Cindy Vandiver with Stockton Mortgage. So today, while we're talking about real estate investing, I thought of Mark Twain, um, who said something really profound and great and long-lasting, um, even today, which is, buy land. They're not making it anymore. That is so true. Yes. And that's one of the things I know that I hear from many people that their parents or other family members tried to, you know, encourage them when they were younger to go ahead and buy a home or, you know, buy land or, you know, make some sort of investment. And they buy re- early, yes. buy early. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they regret it. They do. They yeah. do. It's like investing in a 401k. If you don't do it early, then you don't reap the benefits over time. Yes. And, you know, I remember it being a, a child and hearing my, my, my um, uncle tell me that, something about a land lot that he had owned on Lake Lanier and he had sold it, you know, just to kind of get it off of his hands years, be- you know, years before. And he regretted that because his, the investment had gone up, you know, incredibly and he missed out on the gains of that investment. Yes. Yes. There's many stories like that for sure. Yes. And so, you know, that's really stuck with me, you know, throughout, throughout my adult years. And I, I think of that when I think about investing in real estate. So today, if you're listening to the show, we're talking about investing in real estate. And maybe you've been thinking about um, being a real estate investor. Maybe it's just something that um, has been an idea, or maybe you've been, you know, writing down a a plan. So we want to talk about that today and help you get started in in reaching your your investment goals. Um, You know, let's talk about a few things that real estate investing, um, you know, brings as an advantage um, for you, um, you know, I definitely have to say that we know that some of the wealthiest people in the United States are real estate investors. Very true. And Donald Trump. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. We have Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. So many people that have, you know, built a, an empire or a dynasty off of investing in real estate. But then you have people on local levels that I know that just have a lot of um, long-term rental properties. And they do well with that. Um, so there's so so it's it's really a, a lucrative business. And um, if you learn it and you um, are become a wise investor, then it definitely can serve you long term. So investing in real estate is a great way to build passive income. Yes, it is. And so that's one of those things um, that that people look at and think about. How can I, in addition to maybe my nine to five job, how can I start building some a little bit of passive income? And real estate is a terrific way. To do just that. So um, here's, here's some of the um, wonderful benefits of being a real estate investor. Uh, when you're investing in real estate, you have a predictable cash flow. When you're investing and you've done your homework on a property and, um, you, you know, you have a, a property, especially if you're purchasing a property that already has a rental history, even better, even better, right? Yes. Then you have a predictable cash flow. Many times when I'm working with clients, obviously we're getting the information from the rental, uh, man, the property management company that handles that rental, right? Or the actual sellers themselves that are giving that rental history on that property. So you can actually go back and see what has been the gross and what was the net income after their expenses on the property. Yeah. And that, that's wonderful because people can go in and understand exactly what they should receive on that as long as they keep the property rented, of course. But it gives a great history on that. So it's wonderful to go in and look at one that's already previously been rented. Right, right. So you know when you're going into something, um, of course, things change and fluctuate, but you know and have an idea mm-hmm. at that time. It minimizes your risk. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. So another great um Part of investing in real estate is that it appreciates in value. Just like I was saying earlier about the the land that my uncle had owned, if he had just held on to that Lake Lanier 
lot. Right. Then it would have been worth a whole lot more now. Yes. And so many times people, when they're investing, they invest in a property initially for the uh, passive income. And then over time, as that property appreciates in value, then they sell years later um, so that they can gain additional um, income from that. And then maybe they'll take a part of that income and put it into an, another rental and, you know, real estate and rental investment, or perhaps they take it and put it in annuities or different things, you know, that they can do that they use for their retirement. Right. Right. Um, and so, so again, it appreciates in value. And then, um, also real estate can, can be leveraged. Um, there's a lot of different ways that people do that. And one example that comes to mind is a 1031 exchange right. where people will exchange properties of like value. So, you know, if you had a, a beach rental and you said, hey, I want to to switch out and have a mountain house and you find someone else who is willing to trade out a mountain house, um, then that, you know, that um, helps you to, um, to leverage your property to get another property while also... Um, avoiding, you know, the tax repercussions. Right. With the 10, 1031 exchange, you can sell one property and turn around and invest it within a certain period of time and not pay those income taxes or those capital gain taxes yes. on that property. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Cindy, tell us a few more of the, uh, the uh, advantages of real estate investing. Well, I have a lot of people that go in and buy um, real estate for retirement purposes. So, they'll go in and, and finance the property over the next 10 or 15 years and the tenants paying rent will pay that note basically. So there's really not a lot of out of pocket expense on the investor side. And then once the notes paid off, then they have a free cash flow for retirement. So if the rent's $2,000 a month that goes into their pocket, it's $2,000 a month income. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, real estate's also tax deductible. I have a lot of people who uh, fill out a Schedule C on their tax returns, so they can write off depreciation, which is it's which is the biggest part of of a non cash expense that you can write off. I mean, it's pretty much one of the only ones that you can do with real estate. So you get a very good tax benefit on your investment properties as well. Yes, absolutely. And we all need help with our taxes. And yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Any help that we can get for sure. So one of the things that we look at when um, when we're you know going to begin in any new endeavor is, first of all, what are your goals and what do you want ultimately the outcome to be? And we've, we've talked about some of those advantages and some of those might be, some, you know, included in your, your real estate investing goals. Um, but thinking about, do you want to be um, you know, a landlord and do you want to have a, sh a, a long-term rental or do you want to be an um, investor in short-term rentals or are, are you going to be someone who blends those together? Right, right. I have investors that will buy property and rehab them and sell them. So that's a short-term goal that they have. Some of them have um, long-term rentals where they rent it by the month or by the year. No, and sometimes they'll do like a, a long-term uh, rental uh, yearly lease and then it renews on a month to month after that and then even some do kind of like a second home and then do the nightly rentals you know as long as you are in the house two weeks out of the year you can count it as a second home but also get that benefit of that extra income for nightly rentals so it, it really depends you can do all or some or all blended however you want to do it Yes, definitely. And, and, and then, so that's one of the things you want to ask yourself. The other thing is, you know, is this something that I want to um, have as a business for, for passive income for the next 20 years, 25 years, or like we were talking about earlier, is this a part of your retirement plan? So if right. that's a part of your retirement plan, then it's going to be in your best interest to consider about having that paid off earlier than a 30 year note. That way that when you're into those retirement years, you would just have um, more income co generating that cash in. flow coming in. Yes, versus mm -hmm. having to continue to pay the mortgage Correct. Um, on that property. So there's, you know, so those are things that you want to consider within your goals. And that comes down to financial preparedness. Um, and um, so, hey, we're going to be right back on the From the Heart and Sold show on Business Radio X. 
you want to know more about real estate and investing, let's talk. You can call me at 678-851-4992. Set up an appointment and we'll help you to get clear on your goals. We're back with the From the Heart and Sold Real Estate Show. I am April Rooks with Remax Center here with my lovely host, Cindy Vandiver with Stockton Mortgage. Hi there. Hey there. We're back. And we've been talking about real estate investing and what your goals are. In our last segment, we talked about some real estate goals and we were talking about the financial preparedness for becoming a real estate investor. So let's dig into that a little bit and help those who might be on the you know verge of, of getting started in their uh, real estate investment journey and understanding how they can be, you know how they can become prepared to um, to do just that. Yes, when you go into invest in real estate, it's not like the hundred percent down programs that we have for first time home buyers, right? So you do have to have a little bit of money down. Uh, on investment properties, you need to be prepared to put down 20 to 25% down on the purchase price. In addition to that, you are required to have six months of reserves of the total payment, that's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. You've got to have six months reserves stuck back in your bank account to cover that in case the property is vacant for a period of time. The lender wants to make sure that you have the funds available to float that and make the payment in case something goes wrong. So those those are the two things that people really need to understand. You've got to have your cash in a bank that's sourceable, that we can trace uh, for the down payment. And then uh, you do want to understand that the interest rate on those properties are a little bit higher than a, a primary residence. Now, for a second home, it's not as strict as that. You can put 10% down on a second home, and you don't have to have the monthly reserves. I mean, it's always good to have reserves. It always makes the underwriter much happier, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's just that, that warm, fuzzy feeling of, yes, you you know, you know right. you have some reserves in case something, something just doesn't go as planned. Doesn't go as planned. Exactly. Exactly. Now, on investment property, too, you can carry it out 10, 15, or 30 years on the mortgage, which makes it a lot easier, and and that helps you determine, one, on your goals, if what your long-term goals are. Of course, that's going to affect how long you want to finance it. Your debt-to-income ratios, you're going to want to know that. Um, and we can work in, to the analysis of how much that property will rent for. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is evaluating your risk of that property, making sure that you're using um, a management system or an online calculator, which is going to be an ROI calculator. And that's helping you to understand the return on your investment. So you're looking at the, you know, the things of um, such as the amount that you're paying down, looking at your closing costs that you have to pay for that property. Right. Um, the, uh, the, as well as your, um, you know, any other expenses that you have for that property, all of those will go into that calculation to see your return on investment. And of course, with, as with any investment, you might not have the, quite the returns initially. Um, and sometimes it takes time um, to build on that. So you have to kind of evaluate your risk within all of those numbers and, um, and, and doing your homework, which is just important. It is very important. Um, on, you know, where that property is located, the, um, you know, and all of the details of the, the past history with that property, if it has mm-hmm. been a rental, and, um, and just evaluating the overall risk. Everything's risky. We know that in Everything life. Everything is. And, and if yes. it's going to be worth it, it's definitely going to involve some risk, but we can make, you know, wise choices by evaluating those risks and at least, um, you know, maybe not completely eliminating risk, but decreasing. Minimize it as much Mm -hmm. as possible, right? Right. Right. So one of the things, too, that people really got to consider is the time that it's going to take to manage those properties. And do you want to take that time? And do you have that time? Because you may want to invest in a management company like a realtor, because a lot of realtors do do property management. You're also going to want to have your your sphere of influence, right? Because you're going to want to have your... Um, your maintenance guy, your HVAC guy, your plumber on hand, your electrical guy on hand, 
if anything goes wrong with the property because I know myself I can't drop what I'm doing right now to go run fix house. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. so. And, and whether you're a short-term or a long-term rental, you, those things are involved. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we were talking a little bit, you know, earlier about when you're, um, when you're looking at a long-term rental, for example, you know, do you want to be a landlord? Right. And or do you want to be that person who gets the phone calls and has to call the plumber and, you know, work on those repairs and, and deal with issues? Um, and, and, and you also want to, if you're going to be a landlord, make sure that you are evaluating your uh, renters. Yes, that's very important. Yes. Because you're going to want to um, really be um, strict to the point where, you know, most renters don't have as good a credit as home buyers because they're renting or or because they are in a position where they don't know where they want to be long term, right? So you need to evaluate the credit risk as well for your renter and the stability of their employment and things like that. Uh, yes, all of those things that need to be done up front. So, so again, ev- evaluating, do you want to be a landlord or would you rather have a realtor or someone to be a property manager for you um, to help with your your time and with, you know, other efforts such as evaluating the um, the financial risk with renters. Um, and then the same thing with a short-term rental. And a sh- with a short-term rental, um, many people, especially in North Georgia, use property management companies. And, <coughs> excuse me, those property management companies, they, um, you know, they do handle all of the renting, all of the, you know, the All the scheduling, the, mm-hmm. the cleaning, all of that. Everything. Mm-hmm. So that... So that you, while you are, you know, paying anywhere from 30 to 40 percent, um, you are not having to deal with a lot of those headaches. Right. Yeah. And so, um, so you're just evaluating what works best for you and where you are in your life and what you want to do. So those are some great, ta- some great things that we've talked about today in, in real estate investing. And we look forward to sharing much more with you in shows to come. Now we're going to take a moment to talk about our um, good heartwarming um, stories in the community, which we call the from the heart moment here on the show. I recently spoke with Kay Blackstock with the Georgia Mountain Food Bank, and we just were, you know, had the best conversation. And I I learned from her that she, along with some wonderful other organizations and people here in the Gainesville community, just had an event. Um, and the a few of the organizations that were part of that were the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Gainesville Police Department. Um, we had Andre Cheeks. Chia ended up leading the effort, and she's actually um, someone I know well. Great, great lady. And Deshaun Watson, which we know he's right. <laughs> he's now our, our famous um, Gainesville um, football player. And, uh, and he is such an advocate in this community and gives back to this community in a big way. So they put this event together with the Gainesville Housing Authority, and they gave away... Um, so much food from the, you know, with their team. And she just bragged about how the whole Georgia Mountain Food Bank team and all of these people just rocked. I mean, they just were fabulous. That's they, incredible. Yeah. And they served 800 families. Oh, my. Yes. They came. Oh, up, wow. They served 800 families that day. And it, I was just tickled to hear that um, that they had done that. And she said they had so much food there that they ended up sharing more over at the St. John Baptist Church that day. That's great. Yes. So, I mean, it's amazing how community and how people come together to help, and we need that. It's important in our lives. It is very important. Yes. So today we've talked about real estate investing and how great it is to build a passive income, and it can be an excellent part of a retirement plan. And really, you just got to figure out what your goals are, whether you're a short-term or long-term investor, and look at your finances and see what you need to do to take to the, the next step. Yeah, so you want to know more about real estate and investing, let's talk. You can call me at 678-851-4992, set up an appointment, and we'll help you to get clear on your goals. Hey, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. We'd love to connect with you there. And next week, we have another terrific show lined up for you about online lending versus traditional community um, lending. So tune in again on the From the Heart and Sold show next week, right here on North Georgia Business Radio X. 
This podcast features mortgage banker Cindy Vandiver, NMLS 164102. At Stockton Mortgage, NMLS 8259, equal housing lender. Views and opinions expressed are those of Ms. Vandiver and do not necessarily reflect those of Stockton Mortgage. Ms. Vandiver's information should not be considered to be legal or tax advice.